So in this video, we're given an opportunity to look into the small spot welder. This is the BWM 330. We'll look over the user's manual here and see anything that interests you. You can pause it and take a look at it. But the reason this came about is the company that sent us the microscope to review the other day, the Tom Love 10.1 inch microscope. During that review, I showed just a little spot welder board I had there for comparison. And so the company contacted me and said, would you like to look at our spot welder? And they sent me the information over for it and, you know, absolutely would like to look at it. Um, it looks like a nice spot welder. The leads are simple, but look effective here. Um, it's a 10,000 milliamp hour, which is pretty interesting. We see here we have a micro USB in and also a power bank output. It comes with the, looks like some 0.1 and actually a lot of the 0.1 millimeter nickel strip. Some sandpaper to keep our tips in good shape here. Just keep the oxidation off of them. Comes with a small charge cable here. I already got a long one here on the bench. We'll hook it up and charge it in a minute, but a quick press of the button and there's our display. Try to get closer here, but the, my camera's actually making it look like it's got a lot of display jitter, but it's um, that's just in my camera. It's actually a very nice OLED display. We're gonna let this charge up and we'll come back and we'll test it out. So back now, fully charged. I really do like the extruded aluminum case. The buttons are pretty user friendly here. I'm going to show in the top right corner here of a little bit lower light condition video of this screen so you can tell that the OLED display is actually really nice since my camera is definitely messing up the footage here. But the menu is pretty easy here as we just go up and down and make our selection hit the menu to select different things whether it be our pulse time our pulse differential or delta delay and then just simply hit the plus or minus to increase the number we we'll hold it more than two seconds and release and we power off I'm just going to take some time now to cut off some sections of this 0.1 millimeter strip and we'll start testing with that. We just have our initial settings here. We'll try and see if we need to bump it up. Bring over a little mica sheet to protect our workbench. Definitely put something on to protect our eyes here. We definitely are doing some high current welding. Even if it is a control pulse, we still want to take precaution with our eyes. And right out of the box, it definitely stuck together, but probably need to go a little bit higher. Yeah, just peel right off. So didn't penetrate the best on that. So let's bump that up and let's try it again. Let's try 15 milliseconds on the pulse, leaving our other settings as default. We can definitely see the leads jump a little bit there, so that definitely felt better. Yep, we're definitely gonna say at 15 milliseconds there, that's a, uh, held together a lot better. We'll make sure we keep our leads separated here. Of course, if they touch one second later, it's going to pull. So we don't want that to happen. So yeah, that took pliers to separate, but the whale did still fail instead of the actual strip. I'm going to go ahead and plug up the USB power here just so our control power don't dip as we go on up higher on our duration of our pulse. It may or may not be needed, but for these small spot welders, I always do this regardless. Unless you just got to take it somewhere portable, and you can do that as well. If I'm using it on my bench, I always have it so my 5 volts is going into my control circuit. 
in case our voltage does dip on the um, higher duration pulses here. That was a big difference there. I, that was 20 milliseconds. We can probably drop back to 18 and try that. I think 18 to 20 is going to be fine with these 0.1 millimeter thickness strips. We'll do this at 18. We'll see. Oh yeah, strong pulse. A little bit warm. Let's see. Oh, yeah, very strong. Get my other pliers out here. Oh, yeah. Destroy the strip. That's what you want to see. You know, that's a good well. Let's keep these separated here. As we said, about 18 milliseconds. One second and two pulses. So now we have a a less than ideal situation here where we got a already used cell so the tip of it is not in pristine or like new condition so which is typically what we're going to do to repair a pack right so let's see how this does at 18 milliseconds let's go up to 22 milliseconds and see how that does Yeah, that had a good feel to it. Yep, I think 22 is going to be it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be tough to get off. Yep. Let's get the ignition pliers. Something with a lot of good grip. Yep. Yep, destroyed the strip. Pulled it off. The whale's stronger than the strip. That's awesome. So 22 milliseconds. One second delay time is what I was using there, and uh, two pulses on that. So we go to the negative side. This one's humped up pretty bad, so 22 milliseconds may not be enough. Let's see. That felt pretty good. That's stronger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think the whale still was the failure point on that one. That's pretty close. It's going up 25 milliseconds. Try to push this back down just a little bit where it's all humped up. Less than ideal, of course, but sometimes what we're doing is rebuilding battery packs. So maybe putting a um, strip back on a used cell. You see those leads jump with that current pulse going through it. And that actually felt pretty good. Just going by experience, but yeah, it was pretty strong. One was weaker than the other, but. It may take all the way to 30 on this one. Let's go yep, roll it over. Let's go back to 30. 30 milliseconds. Still a one second delay for when it does pulse. And then two pulses. We can go all the way up to four pulses on this as well. But Let's see how the max duration works at two pulses. It actually felt like it went very well. Oh yeah, that's solid. Oh yeah, ripped it right off. That's what you want to see is a strip failure and not the wheel failure. Yep. So there we go, 30 milliseconds. 
on this less than ideal battery end. With 0.1 millimeter strips and it's stronger than the strip itself. Awesome. Let's go back to the cell again and this time I want to try four pulses. See it we we roll over we roll over to three back to one, but if we go down, if we go down it shows four pulses. So that's what we want to try is we want to 30 millisecond four pulses. Put my glasses on of course. This is pretty much the max output we can expect here out of this little portable spot welder. But a very bad condition here on the top of this positive side of the cell. Oh yeah, that was very strong. Yeah. Let you look at that a little closer. That looks like an excellent well. Rip the, rip the strip. Yeah, the welded part of the strip stayed on there. That's a good sign. Next up is going to be even tougher. This is a 0.15 millimeter strip that I have for some bad repairs, and should be pushing the envelope really on a on a portable welder. And we have a very much less than ideal end here on this battery, but. I'm going to try to catch the very edge of it and give it a pretty good test here. 30 milliseconds pulse, 4 pulses. Let's do 2 wells. Give us a little 4 dots here. What do you think? It's going to be a little warm. Yep, it pulled a strip. I think these have more nickel in them, so the strip's a little weaker, but it pulled it pulled the strip apart right where the whales were, so that was definitely a good whale. For our last test here, let's just take the 0.15 millimeter strips and let's just stick two together on the highest setting here again. Good whale good weld gonna be warm oh yeah it's a little warm for sure it'll cool off fast there we go yeah it looks pretty strong Man, really strong. Yeah, I can't put my to snatch it. Yeah, it ripped apart. Well there you go, look at that. Excellent wheel. It's gonna be a handy addition to the bench right here. It did very well with the point one as well. It's the point one five millimeter. Um just to verify that I'm saying this is 0.1 is correct. Yeah, 0.1 millimeter. Let's check these 0.15s as well. I don't know that I ever checked them myself. Yep, 0.15 millimeter. So very impressive. I do like the display. I like the menu. It has a very easy interface to it. Just stepping through the 
your settings and up and down for your adjustments for your parameters and hold it down and off and pretty simple and straightforward. Let's take a look inside now and just see what the build quality looks like. Now the user's manual at the bottom does tell us not to disassemble the product, so of course we're just doing it here for build quality analysis only. We'll do it here so you don't have to. I didn't want to pull too hard on the board here, but it does push out. If we, if we take the back end off, we see that it does push out. We're getting caught on our, our viewing window here a little bit. I think that's just foam. Oh, it's, oh, it's a little spacer rod. One on each side, it looks like. A little fiberglass rod for spacing the board. That's a good thought, put into that. That way, when you push on the buttons, the board has something to rest against instead of the battery terminals. That's definitely a good long-term solution. We're just hanging up here on this foam as we ease it out. There we go. 5,000 milliamp cells. Two of them. Over the display, soldered in place here. Do have some beefy MOSFETs, it looks like. Looks like they're going to be in-channel. That's on the negative side. Let me verify that. Yep, on the negative side. That's our microcontroller under our display. The way they did the EC5 connector. Interesting now to handle a lot of current there. We see our positive goes straight out and our negative is controlled by these four beefy in-channel MOSFETs. And it looks like those are international rectifier and I'll put a really, really close data sheet up here. I couldn't find the exact one, but this one looks really, really close, and I'm very impressed at the current capabilities of these four. So hopefully this won't give any trouble because it looks like continuous current is rated for over a thousand amps based on this data sheet for these hex fits. And reassembly just without any issues at all here. Again, I really like these extruded aluminum cases designed with the little PCB end caps. I like it a lot. I like the way this spot welder uses the EC5 connectors as well because I've got a lot of XT60s and EC5 style connectors. Happens to be um, connectors that a lot of people's already got, uh, at least rarely available. back together with no problems so yeah the ec5 connector and the leads are actually 8 gauge and 200c rated so that is awesome we'll keep our tips here in good shape and we're going to get a lot of useful life out of these tips you know they're simple but they work very well i have some others like this i mean none of these leads hardly ever come with replaceable tips and some come with this type of plug-in connector. I actually like the EC5s better myself, but I could throw a connector on these if I wanted to. I do want to show the five volts output coming off of the power bank here, 5.11 volts, excellent. This also is a little bit better picture of the display here, how well it looks in real life. So I do want to thank Fayot for sending out this BWM330 portable spot welder for us to review. I enjoyed taking a look at it, and it's going to be a very useful addition to my workbench here. And hopefully you'll see it on many, many videos to come in battery pack repairs and things of that nature. So I do appreciate them letting us look into it. So I hope you liked this video today, looking into this portable spot welder. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll have a link down in the video description for this spot welder if you're interested, as well as some other tools and interesting items that I find helpful on my workbench. And all those links are affiliate links and they really help support the channel. So any link that you click on, I greatly appreciate. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.